Hello, I'm Dr. Hassan Dohid, and I'm here once again with a sensational topic, step-by-step meta-analysis for beginners. Welcome back. Step-by-step meta-analysis for beginners. Yes, if you are an absolute beginner and you want to learn meta-analysis and you are scared and you don't know how to do it, now this video is for you. Watch it and you will be able to understand what meta-analysis is all about. Your fear about meta-analysis will go away if you'll just listen to this video and follow these steps. I'm telling you, everyone can do it. You can do it. Let's begin. So what are the steps of writing a meta-analysis or doing a meta-analysis? First of all, divide meta-analysis into four phases. So we will divide into four phases. What are those phases? Number one, phase number one is the planning phase. Phase number two is data search or search strategy, search strategy. Phase number three is the meta-analysis, the real analysis. And then the phase number four is writing. So let's, if you divide this meta-analysis into these four phases, it will become very easy for you to understand. So let's begin. The phase one is the planning phase. So what do you do in the planning phase? First, you decide a topic. Once you have decided a research topic, now you know what exactly your topic will be. The second step is to decide your research question. Now your research question, what is your research question? Remember the PICO format. We use PICO format to decide a research question. PICO is P-I-C-O or P-E-C-O. Both of these approaches can be used. And some people use PICO TT, and we'll talk about this. So PICO actually, P stands for population or problem. I for intervention, the main thing. Now we're coming to that. Why I said main thing, I'll talk about this. PICO P for uh, population, I for intervention, C for comparison or control group, and O is for outcome. These are the four components of a research question. So when you develop a research question, you should have these four components mentioned in your research question. Now, if you are writing a meta-analysis, now it's up to you to decide whether your meta-analysis will be just of clinical trials or meta-analysis will be just of observational studies. Although observational studies meta-analysis is rare and difficult to do, that's why most of the meta-analyses are done on clinical trial studies. So what is meta-analysis? The first thing first, I hope all of you already know this, meta-analysis is a combination of so many previous papers, results. We combine the results together and then we write one paper. So what kind of papers you will combine? clinical trials or observational studies, but mainly clinical trials. And clinical trials are the ones that have intervention. That's why we have this intervention in PICO. So your research question will be population, intervention, I for intervention, C for comparison or control group, O for outcome. Now remember, if you remove control group, the C or or, or comparison, then highly likely it will remain a systematic review. It will not become a meta-analysis. If you really, really want to do meta-analysis, make sure you include all four components of the PICO question. Then highly likely it will become a meta-analysis. Another way to make sure that it remains meta-analysis is try to include similar studies in terms of intervention and outcome, similar studies, similar studies. And not all studies will be absolutely similar. So find whatever are the closest in terms of similarities just add those studies they could be a little different little different it is okay is okay but if the studies are too different they are way too different let's say there is no way you can compare them then this will remain and this will become a systematic review remember systematic review becomes meta analysis right so you can either take your paper towards a systematic review direction or you can take it towards meta-analysis direction. But if the studies are, but if the studies are way too different, it will remain a systematic review. But if the studies are way too similar or somewhat similar, or I would say somewhat different, then they will take your paper towards a meta-analysis direction. So this is about PICO question. Now the next step is the step number three. That is the inclusion exclusion criteria. 
yes, you cannot write a systematic review or meta analysis without an inclusion exclusion criteria, predetermined inclusion exclusion criteria, because you just need to make sure that you include some studies. You cannot include all the studies possible. So you set a predetermined inclusion exclusion criteria. And how do you decide inclusion exclusion criteria? Your research question will guide you in deciding what your inclusion exclusion criteria will be. Another way of deciding inclusion exclusion criteria is play smart. Ask seniors, ask other people who have done it before, or look at other people's published papers and see what they have done, how they have decided their inclusion exclusion criteria. This will give you a broad based idea of how inclusion exclusion criteria is decided. Once that is done, the fourth step would be to register your paper on Prospero website. But how do you register without writing a protocol? So the fifth step would be write a short protocol. A research protocol is actually your plan, what you are supposed to do, what you're planning to do. Once you have written it, you submit it, to, submit it to Prospero website. But remember, it's not mandatory. It's optional for systematic reviews and meta-analysis. For review articles, it's optional. It's not mandatory. So once you submit it, wonderful. If you don't do it, that's OK as well. So once that is done, your phase one of planning is done. Now let's jump to the phase two. Phase two is the data search, the search strategy. Now, what do you do? The next step, next step is, or I would say the first step of second phase is that you decide your databases, what databases you will use for data search. Remember, use at least five, minimum five databases. More and more databases is, is better. I know some people have used two databases, but I recommend, I will insist, and I will request you to use as many databases as possible to make your paper really, really powerful and wonderful. Because writing a meta-analysis means that you are giving the power to the results, the precision to the results. You are creating a high-quality paper. So it's better to look at multiple databases. And what are the most common databases? If you are a healthcare student, you start with PubMed and Medline. They are more or less the same because Medline is a database and PubMed is an interface to Medline. So you can find Medline articles on PubMed. Now, the second is PubMed Central, then Web of Science, then Scopus, Embase, Sinal, Google Scholar, so many, so many databases are uh, available to, to use. But you just use any of those five databases and also Cochrane Library and uh, um, PsycInfo, so many databases. I cannot even remember all the names right now. I'm just giving you as an example that you can look at the list of the databases, electronic data databases, and choose the best ones. Once you have selected the databases, the next step is to start the search strategy. Now, remember, in certain databases like PubMed, you will have to do regular keyword search and the mass search strategy. That is the control vocabulary search. So not every database will need it. So mainly your keywords will be used in other databases, but in Medline and databases that have control vocabulary, you will use mesh and regular keyword search. Once you're done with that, you'll have data collection of your database of your databases. So database one gives you these many papers. Let's say you search so many papers. Database two gave you some papers. Pa database three gave you some, some papers. Database number four gave you some papers. And database number five gave you some papers. Now you have a total number of papers. Now what do you do? Now it's time to remove duplicates because some studies will be common in some data databases, right? There is a possibility that there is a study in PubMed and that, that study is also available on Web of Science, very highly likely. So that's why it's very important to remove duplicates. So remove duplicates. You can remove duplicates through Excel manual, or you can also remove duplicates by using reference manager softwares like EndNote or Mendeley. Once you do that, once the once the duplicates have been removed, though, now go to the next step. The next step, the third step would be actually is to do the screening. And screening are of two types. First, you do the screening, screening number one. That is the title and abstract. Once that is done, you move to the next one, the full text screening. Once that is done, remember these all these steps would be done by two authors. So choose two authors, you and the second author may, mainly. Now the next person, next thing is the quality appraisal. Then you check quality of each study that you have included. Yes, you included clinical trials. All of, of, of them were clinical trials. So what? study uh, assessment tool, uh, what quality appraisal tool you will use, usually usually the Cochrane Risk of Bias Assessment tool to make sure that you include studies with 
lesser and lesser bias. Once that is done, you have a total number of papers. Now you do data extraction, use data extraction form, extract data. Now you have data extraction. Now it's time for data synthesis. Now in data synthesis, now you decide about your meta-analysis. Now the main thing comes in, your phase number three begins, that is meta-analysis. Meta now what do you do? First thing first is you look at all the studies that you have included the good quality studies that, have, that are left. Now you check the effect size of each study separately. Once you check the effect size, you have calculated the effect size of each study. Now you look at the cumulative, the combined effect size of all the studies together. Once you have it, now you have two ways to do meta-analysis. Either you choose random effects model or you choose the fixed effects model. There are two models, two ways you can do meta-analysis. And remember, experts believe that you should use random effects model because it assumes that there are there is no true effect in the intervention. I have discussed in that in the previous video about this. You can watch the previous video to understand what exactly I mean. Now, here I just want to stick with the steps. Once you do the selection of the model, let's say you selected random effects model, and I highly recommend you use random effects model to avoid any kind of bias or errors. Once that is done, and now the next thing is you draw the forest plot, you check the heterogeneity because of your forest plot, you look at the weight of the study, once that is done, you jump to the next step, that is the funnel plot. That means the publication bias. You look at the publication bias. Yes, publication bias can be done by many methods. Uh, you can use any of those. And, and the most common one, uh, the, the way is to look at uh, the funnel plot make a funnel plot once you do the funnel plot then you are done now the next two steps that are left are sensitivity analysis to see if there is if you remove any one study how the results will differ now the next analysis is a subgroup analysis now the subgroup analysis is let's say you have an intervention and you are um you you have in your studies the intervention is talking about a disease that it treats a disease but there is another intervention or there is another factor or variable that can also have an impact on that disease. So you do the subgroup analysis to see if that other factor can have an impact so that can have the subgroup effect. So that's why you do subgroup analysis as well. So sensitivity analysis, then subgroup analysis. Once that analysis is done, you have all the data now organized and of course, if you don't know statistics, make sure you seek statistician's help and follow these steps and make sure your statistician is following the same steps as well with you. Once you are done, now the step four begins and the step four is of writing. Now the writing task begins and how do you begin writing? Make sure you open Prisma checklist. Preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analysis. You have Prisma checklist open and make sure every section of your paper has all the parts covered. Paper will have introduction, method, results, discussion, and conclusion section. And you will, of course, have the abstract in the end, but that actually goes on the top. And once you have it, now fill out the information. Make sure everything is according to Prisma checklist. Once that is done, your paper is completed. And that's how you write a meta-analysis, and that's how you do meta-analysis. This is the complete step-by-step -step guideline for meta-analysis for beginners. Now watch this video again. Enjoy. Learn it and make sure you remember these steps and keep learning and keep watching. Thank you.